Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director, Consulting Services, Trybridge, Craig Barassington. Hi, good morning everybody, and thanks for joining. I uh, have to say that was a really great uh, presentation by Dan, really insightful and uh, motivating, particularly the, the Southwest story. Liked it a lot. Um, my name is Craig Brassington. I'm the Director of Consulting Services for the Tribridge Human Capital Management Division. Uh, for those of the, you that don't know Tribridge, even we're plastered over the screens here, we've been a cornerstone partner now for about 10 years, and we have really offer a full suite of cornerstone services. Our goal is to really help you as clients and customers go further in your cornerstone journey. And to that we offer a range of services from consulting, implementation, optimizing your portal, uh, content creation and curation, managed services, as well as a lot of what my team does, which is focused around custom reporting, third party integrations, and the overall user experience. Um, and that's really what we're going to talk with the Altria team about today. You've heard already from Adam yesterday and from Dan just now, it's all about the experience. And we're going to sort of discuss Altria's journey from having sort of a top-down, more of an administrative uh, cornerstone platform to really stepping back and reevaluating their strategy, putting the learner at the very forefront of everything that they're thinking about, and then creating their vision and strategy from that. And we're going to talk about how they brought that vision to life. We're going to look through the process that they went through, some of the challenges that they faced, and we'll also show some of the final product that they did within the platform and have some discussion around how they came up with that and how Trowbridge helped them as well. So that said, if you could join me in welcoming the Altria Learning and Development Leadership Team, Andy Rung, Heather Bell, and Jason Accurso to the stage. Hey guys. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. So this is going to be quite informal and you know, fireside chat without the fire type of thing. So, um, so Andy, Ultra is a Fortune 150 company, and I know you've got about 8,000 employees. But tell us a little bit about the structure. I know there's some different companies under the brand itself. Yeah. So uh, many of you may not be familiar with Altria as the parent company of um, some of the largest and most successful responsible tobacco companies in the world, certainly in the US. Um, some notable companies under our uh, Altria banner, uh, US Smokeless Tobacco, the largest smokeless tobacco company, um, brands such as Copenhagen and Skoll, um, Chateau Saint Michel, which is a very large winery conglomerate in the Pacific Northwest, and probably the largest company, Philip Morris USA, uh, the largest cigarette manufacturer in the U.S. today and has been for the last 40 years. Um, we make the iconic brand Marlboro. Supporting these operating companies are two um, service companies. The first is Altria Client Services, which houses some of your traditional corporate functions, HR, law, finance, procurement, um, and Altria Group Distribution Company, who we work for. Um, which is about 2,000 people spread across the United States and in Richmond, Virginia. And we're really responsible for, once the product leaves the manufacturing center, getting it to the consumer. So all the way through the supply chain at retail. Got it. Now, talk a little bit more about the, the client services. You mentioned you're in the Altria Group distribution, but normally learning and development is kind of within that HR space a lot of the time. Uh, Heather, what's different? Yeah, it is, you're right. It's unique, I guess, maybe even strange, sort of, but we are in learning and development in the sales company. And so I think it's relevant for our story today and for y'all because, first of all, we, our learners are salespeople. So they're out in the field, they are busy selling all day long, and they're not sitting behind a desk ready to take you know, e-learning or in a classroom, that sort of thing. So I think that's one reason that it's relevant to understand kind of where we fit in this structure. The other thing is we're not in HR, so it is a little bit different. Right. 
Um, and that means some of the decision rights live in our central HR function. So for us, we own the decision rights for things like learning, um, and then we influence our HR friends on things like performance and succession and whatnot. So I think that'll be relevant to our story today. Um, but what it doesn't mean is that we are distracted from what our company is trying to achieve. So uh, within our L&D function in sales, we're still very focused on delivering results for our operating companies and operating um, within our mission, so. Okay, so perhaps um, talk a little further, maybe Jason, describe what, what is the mission? Sure, uh, Altria's mission is to own and develop financially disciplined uh, companies that are leaders in responsibly providing adult tobacco consumers and wine consumers with superior branded products. And in pursuit of that mission, we have four mission goals that we talk about. The first is which is invest in leadership. And really, our outlook on leadership at Altria is whether you're an individual contributor or a people manager in our company, you're a leader. And our promise to you is, in your career at Altria, you will be developed. The second mission goal is align with society. And that's where we recognize that society gives us the license to operate. And so we always want to hear their concerns and be proactive in addressing those. The third is create shareholder value. And if any of you are shareholders of Altria or formerly Philip Morris USA, you know over the last 50 years, that's been a great stock to have. Uh, then lastly, it's about exceeding consumer expectations and what our customers are looking for. And so, uh, just like many of you, we face a consumer that has evolving preferences. And so we're thinking about things like reduced harm products and how to meet their expectations of what they're looking for and doing it in the most responsible way. That's cool, so take that, that first goal, the invest in leadership. Uh, are these new goals for you? Uh, or talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um They've been our mission goals for as long as I've worked at Altria for the last 14 years. Uh, specifically, if you think about our function, it really gets into that investing in leadership. Um, and that's been present from the day I started at Altria to today. Um, it's manifested itself in different forms, as you can imagine, over 14 years. You know, when I started as a sales rep, um, there was a large binder that I received that kind of walked me through how to do my job and how to make a call. Um, and we've kind of evolved that over time. Our first kind of big leap forward was uh, with our first engagement with Cornerstone in 2013. Um, and when we kind of look back on that experience, you know, what we were really focused on is um, easing the administrative burden right. of delivering training, setting up um, instructor-led training for folks that were coming into to our programs. Um, and we weren't, you know, if you think about the conversation between, you know, Josh and Adam yesterday, you know, having this kind of really robust, strong learning management system to ease kind of the admin associated with running a learning system. Um, and what we've realized over the last few years in a pretty you know, long journey, right, is um, we wanted to try to bring that learner to the center and get to the other part, right, the learner experience system. Because um, we know that the modern learners change and their expectations are different. Yeah, like, let's just say that when you mentioned that binder, I don't think it was the moment that we would design today. I mean, <laughs> nobody wants to roll up and get a big fat binder and say, here's your job. I'd much rather come in kind of like that John Deere experience yeah. and, and, and yeah. feel welcomed and feel like what I'm doing matters and I'm part of something really important. Yeah, that John Deere was awesome first yeah. day. And you know, as you can see, the modern learner has a lot of challenges and, and not a lot of time on their plate to, to really focus on learning and development. So anything that you can do to create that moment. That's right is really productive. Yeah, you know, um, about two years ago, we really, we got smarter as an L&D team. It was through partnerships with Cornerstone, with TriBridge. This is an example that comes from Burson. You know, Josh was here yesterday. And as we became smarter about how people learn, that really informed and kind of ignited a spark in us to rethink about our learning and development solution. So we have to meet them where they're at. I mean, I said at the beginning of this, we've got salespeople that are all throughout the country that are busy selling, and that's exactly what we need them doing. But we've got to make sure that we're keeping pace with the, the demands of the skills needed out there. And so we've got to do it in a manner that meets them where they are, you know, on demand, 
on their phone when they need it. Yep. And so that really kind of informed, you know, how we approached reimagining our L&D solution. Uh, and we'll have to come back to that Spark concept in a minute as well, because there's some really cool things yeah. around that to show. Yeah. So let's then get a little bit into that, that process that how did you actually go about reimagining this? Yeah, I think that's what made um, our work just so special and unique, is we had a different approach. Uh, at Altria, we pride ourselves on our ability to execute. Um, speed to market is a core competency of ours. We deliver results. We just make things happen. And so sometimes that leads us to have a bias for action. We may understand a problem or a challenge, and often leadership or the team would focus on just go fix it. Um, well, this time around, Heather and team and I really wanted to take a different approach, so we kind of called a timeout and said, let's lay out a four-phased approach that allow us to build a solution that's sustainable for the future. And that started with an assessment phase. And this was critical. You heard Adam talk about it yesterday, which is getting out and understanding your learner. And so we spent time in the field where our learners sell and complete their job, understanding, understanding what their pain points were, what they needed from a learning and development perspective. We partnered with a third-party thought leader in this space that helped us conduct interviews, focus groups, even an organizational-wide survey so we had insight from our customer, which is the learner, about how to approach the new system. And so through that, we got a lot of findings. We came back with, hey, here's some things that you're doing really well. In particular, we were doing a pretty good job with formal instructor-led training sessions. But we had some opportunities in connecting with tenured employees, ongoing, ongoing learning and development, and delivering learning and training in ways that the modern learner was looking for it. Yeah, that really got us into the second phase around strategy. And again, what was kind of unique here, I think, for us is, as I mentioned earlier, Altria um, has a very proud stable of brands underneath. And one of our core competencies is brand management. And, you know, we took a page out of brand's book, um, out of marketing's book, in that whenever they launch a new product or a promotion, um, they start with the consumer, right? So they think about who is that consumer who's going to buy that can or buy that pack. Who is this? Who are these people? How do, how do we reach these different audiences? And so we did the same thing. You know, we started with the consumer first, um, and our consumer is our learner population. Right. right? And so um, we did a series of focus groups. We call them hot houses, where we brought people in that were both new to role, had been in role for a long period of time, to really understand what it is that those learners were looking for, what were their thoughts about learning, how did they approach it, and we were able to segment our learner population into about seven different groups. And you know, what we found is for 20% of those uh, learners, we were doing a really good job, okay? Which is great, right? 20%. Is it? Um, not really. No, it's not really. Um, and really what we were missing, um, we, what we found was, hey, those, those new to job employees, the new sales reps, the new frontline managers who were going through our really robust formal onboarding curriculums, um, we were meeting them pretty well. That was the 20% that was going great. Yeah. But once they'd gotten past really the second year in job is where we started to lose them. Right. And um, that informed kind of the next part of our work. Yeah, I mean, what they needed was to be empowered. So as we moved into this strategy phase, we knew that we needed to set forth a vision that would reach all of our learners. And so everything that we did really was inspired by ensuring we're engaging with our employees on a, on a career long, even maybe a lifelong learning experience that we're equipping them to be better at their jobs today and to be prepared and have the skills for the next job and that they're empowered to just own their own development. So it was important that we leverage the formal learning, what Andy was talking about, because we were doing a pretty great job there. But we needed to really reimagine self-directed learning and social learning. And so as we began to build our, what we call AGDC University, so as we, were, we began to build that, it was important that we had offerings in those three areas, the formal learning, the self-directed learning, and that social space, because that's what they told us they wanted. That's how the modern learners approach learning today. And what sort of time frame did it take to complete the sort of the first assessment and the strategy portion of this? Yeah, I guess we started this, what? About two years two ago. Two years ago. So yeah. if you look at from stage one, 
to phase four, which was implement. We launched right. in July of last year. Right. It was about two years that we committed to this. Which is slow for us, by the way. Yeah. Jason mentioned earlier that we have a bias for action. I mean, we're like, let's just go. We already had the Cornerstone product. You know, we, we, we could have done it the way we'd always done it in the past, which was just basically lipstick on a pig, like just a, a, a makeover, that's it. Instead, we decided to take it slow, to really get out there, work with the learners, right. identify those pain points, figure out how we can overcome those and make the experience for them really meaningful. Right, and I like one of the things that you mentioned as well, I think personas, you, you identified your different audiences, and really, I, you had a couple of interesting names, I think, for some of your it, folks yeah. as well, right? Well, doubt, doubtful Dan, I mean, pas we, yeah. passionate Polly, loves to learn Lori. Yeah. 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 So they range the spectrum, right, of those that would be your early adopters to those that I'm sure you all have in your organizations that only do training because it's required. Yeah. yeah. And you know, one of the other things when we got into that build phase and you kind of, again, thinking about um, our history of brand management is we recognize that not only did we have to have a, a great strategy, but we had a, we were really launching a brand for the, again, here for the first time. It was like a product. It was like, this was our product. Yeah. AGDC University was going to be this. was a product yeah. for us. I mean, if you remember the first meeting we had with you, our, our, um, our marketing team was in that meeting, right? Yeah. And that, that was a really important aspect from uh, change management as well, which we'll talk about, I think a bit as well, but yeah. all the stakeholders, were there from the very beginning from a buy-in, change management, marketing, everything, so. And you can't miss that step. So if any of y'all are in this same position where maybe you've assessed your learners and you, you, you feel it's time, it's time to kind of evolve the way you're going to market with your L&D solution, don't forget about the change management. You have to have that from, from the get-go. Treat this kind of like your product almost like a marketing campaign. It's so important because you wanna bring the learners along with you. Because for us, it was quite a big shift. We had never empowered our employees to just go get learning on their own. We, we certainly had never given them a platform to crowdsource solutions to their, their issues that they were facing out in the field. And so for us, it was important that from the beginning, all through that strategy and that build phase, that we thought about AGDC University as a product and we introduced it, I guess, the way you would a product. And what really drove a lot of our marketing campaign was the idea that you mentioned, Craig, at the beginning, that the learner has to be front and center. It really is all about you, the learner. And so if, if we could, could I, could we yeah, show an we, example of it? Let's do that. I mean, I could talk about the marketing strategy for the next 20 minutes, or we could just take a look at it. All right. All right, let's take a look. Let's go to the video. In a world seemingly obsessed with success stories, let us pause to honor the path it takes to get there. The hours, months, years of personal development and passionate dedication it takes to become the champion, the title holder, the torch bearer. Because performing when the crowds are cheering and the world is watching is easy. It's the tireless effort and countless hours you put in when no one is watching that makes a leader truly a leader. It's that very spirit that inspires AGDC University enabling every one of us to achieve our fullest potential by providing the tools necessary to build your success story. As your potential grows, AGDC grows with you. As you develop, the company develops. As you succeed, we all succeed. Together, that's true leadership. That's AGDC to the power of you. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, Thanks. now I think I saw some glimpses of the final product in there as well, right? So I think we've got some some, some screen shots of that as well, so we can actually show you some of the things that we did there. Do you want to have talk a little about 
Yeah, let, yeah let's share. First of all, um, we really appreciated working with TriBridge because after we did that assessment and really validated that our learners are similar to what Burson said, kind of how modern learners learn today, we also knew it was important that that experience when they got to the portal felt like Altray, it felt like us, kind of felt like our brand. And so the partnership that we had with both Cornerstone and TriBridge to create that experience, it was really important for us. So I appreciate that. Couldn't have done it without you kind of thing. Well, thank you. I, I wanted to go back to the spark if, if the loop uh, goes back to the, the Cornerstone welcome page. I think it was a really cool concept that the team came up with around sort of a gamification. Um, and actually, there you do some rewards from that as well. Do you want to, uh, if it Yeah, and, and it really was the team, Craig. I mean, it was that was a, 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 an idea that sparked, if you will, between TriBridge and Altria. But um, it was the idea that we wanted to have some light gamification within the university. And so we created something called Fill Your Flame. And as Craig said, it'll loop to it here eventually, but it's this idea as a learner, the, as you take training hours, um, the university flame will fill with the colors of our mosaic. So it gamifies that element, and it's kind of like this badge that you get that you can fill your flame. There's a picture of it there. And so for every 10 hours of training you take, you get credit for filling your flame. And so you could fill your flame as many times as you wanted to. And this gave us an opportunity to engage with our learners yet again through kind of a reward and recognition way. But we didn't take the traditional approach where you just kind of put a leaderboard for everybody to see and rack and stack people. We took a much more subtle approach. So we pulled reports to say who was utilizing and leveraging the system the most. And then we mailed them a wonderful little letter yeah. and a Yeti koozie <coughs> that was branded AGDC University. And the idea behind that was that it would just show up at their house one day. And then maybe when they go to a meeting, when they're with all of their peers, they've got this really fancy koozie that's branded AGDC University, and everybody wants to know, how did you get that, right? I want one of those. And that individual can share, well, actually, AGDC University just sent it to us because, or sent it to me, just as a thank you, right? I filled my flame. That's right, because right. I, I filled my, my flame. flame. So that was a nice little touch that we had there. I that's, think, a, that's a fun one. Another thing that I think was really important for us was the, the custom page feature, making sure that we had a way to communicate beyond you know, the learning objects and things like that. So in this loop, you'll see some of the examples of our custom pages, and we did work with TriBridge to build those. One example is um, our responsibility system. It, it kind of pops up in this loop. Essentially, our responsibility system is all about creating a culture, oh yeah, there it is, a culture of compliance and responsibility. And what we did that was different when we launched AGDCU is we integrated compliance training into our skill-based training, really for the first time, because when you're learning anything, whether it's a skill or how to act more responsible, responsibly, you want that learning to take place through this university. So we leveraged the corporate uh, or the um, custom pages to explain what the responsibility system is, what it was all about, and kind of link to some of the training that was relevant to being responsible. You know, and I think that's to important that, to us. I think to that point, Heather, that goes back to understanding your your learner or your consumer, because they told us with a separate way of delivering, whether it's compliance training or skills training, it was really confusing to them. Right. So we were able to take that insight and say we're going to play it everything, whether training is training, into one place so that they could easily follow along and understand that. Yeah. And because we were kind of separate from HR, that took a little influencing our end as well. It goes back to the structure um, where we've worked with them to procure some of the training they're responsible for creating. But again, have it all run through the university to create a seamless experience for the user. Yeah, yeah another um, unique feature I think that we've leveraged is the Connect right. platform, the social yeah. platform. Um, you know, so as I mentioned, we have about 200 of our AGDC folks that work in Richmond in functions that do everything from trade marketing to learning and development to systems design, et cetera. But the balance of our folks are out in the field sales force across the country. You know, they may be at TSM in the middle of California. They may be somewhere in the Dakotas, wherever that may be. Um, and they don't necessarily know who all of the subject matter experts are back in Richmond to ask about a given system or a given promotion or a program, and, and what we've been able to enable through this platform is this 
uh, you ask system, let's well, through connect, but we've branded it you ask, always seek knowledge, where they can interact directly with a headquarter SME and ask their question directly without having to look through the gal, to, you know, the global address list, sorry, um, to figure out who those people are. Um, and also they can crowdsource answers to a, to a given problem. So if they you know, ask a question through you ask, there may be a colleague somewhere far flung across the country that knows the answer, here's you ask now. Um, that can help them, and it creates those, those bonds and connections for people that may work in fairly remote places yeah. in, their, in our sales organization. Well, remember, with the modern learner, they want the answer now. I mean, so many of our sales right. folks are like, you know, the, the YouTube, the Google generation, like they're used to just pulling out their phone. They don't gotta remember anything. You just Google it, right? So they were looking for that kind of response time from us, and so by creating and leveraging Connect, for this you ask feature, we're meeting that need for them because they can pretty immediately get an answer to whatever their question might be from the expert in Richmond, no matter where they are. And you talked about, um, I think, what, what percentage of your folks access the portal? It's every day, right? Quite a, yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. So at any given day, 25% of our sales force is uh, engaging on the website. They spend about 10 minutes um, on, on the site, which we feel pretty good about. Right. Um, I think it's 90,000 90, objects sessions, yeah. have been, uh, or classes have been taken, 60,000 hours, and this is just in July. So, um, yeah. and, and what's That's really cool. um, great about that, not only those numbers feel really good, but if you look at sort of the trajectory, um, it hasn't dropped off. So when something's new, right, you always see this big spike. Um, but we saw it spike, of course, when it came yeah. out, but it hasn't really fallen off. And we've, we've been pretty steady at that 25% since um, the website launched in July. Awesome. So we've talked a lot about some of the, the good stuff that we've done, but were there any, what were the challenges? It's, oh. yeah. It was totally easy. <laughs> totally I, easy. No, not easy, no. <laughs> uh, this was a major endeavor and it required leadership buy-in and quite frankly, you know, just between us, it was tough. That was hard to get leadership to buy in because we wanted to go slower. Yeah. We wanted to take a different approach with this. We wanted to partner with people outside of Altria like thought leaders in the L&D space, folks like Tribridge, Burson, Cornerstone. And that was just different for us. It was just different. And so, if again, if you guys are in any situation that is similar to this, I'd encourage you to get leadership involved early and come to them with the data. Build your business case and bring them along with you. Well, that, that's the key, right? It yeah. wasn't one conversation that, no that, that you guys had with leadership. It was an initial conversation teeing up this idea. And as we learned more, as we did more research, as these focus groups started to happen, we continued to come back to leadership to say, here's, here's the next step, you know, iteration. Here's where we need to go. It wasn't, you can't expect to show up one day and say, here's this new L&D system we want to launch. I mean, maybe that could work. But in our case, it, 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 took, it, was an, it was an evolving conversation with leadership over time. Yeah, yeah. And I think to that point, the facts tell the story. What we try to do is arm ourselves with information that's out there that demonstrates the return on investment by investing in platforms like Cornerstone um, and really creating the right experience for your learner. And so telling that story allowed leadership to see, okay, we've got an opportunity. We have a mission goal of invest in leadership. This is how we bring it to light. In fact, you know, I'll tell you that last year before Convergence, Andy was new to our group. So he was new to learning and development and had come from various leadership roles in sales. And so we were really upskilling him kind of in this L&D space. And Jason and I had a lot of energy around unified talent management. Well, for someone that's coming from sales, it, it was foreign, the sound, you know, this, this concept of unified talent management was just foreign to him. And so what we decided to do is have a few conversations and then just bring him to Convergence yeah. and let Adam do all the heavy lifting. Yep. Like he can teach him that. <laughs> and that's exactly what we did. Yep. And that continues. I mean, we've got our director here today and she's kind of learning more about what's going on in this industry. So I encourage you to do that. Bring, bring your boss kind of thing. Get it going, yeah. So I suppose, um, you know, what, what's what's next? Are you guys are you guys done? What, what's next for your vision yep. for the portal? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I think the fair answer to that is, I mean, are we ever really done with it? Yeah. Um, what we learned, just what we've seen this week, and the evolution of Cornerstone, and some of the enhancements that are coming this year, um, 
you know, we, when you go to these conferences like ATD and the new, new thinking and, and, and teaching and learning, um, you have to stay abreast of this. That's one thing yeah. that I've learned and these guys have really helped me by bringing me to these things and you know, dropping off pamphlets of things from various research yeah. um, to keep evolving. You know, our next phase for us, I think, you know, we look at this launch that we had in July not as sort of the culmination of a project, though it was you know, a two year journey that you yep. guys were on, but the beginning of really what's next for us. And um, our, our goals moving forward are really starting to apply some of those next level analytics. And we've heard a lot about that at this conference, right? Um, using big data and understanding, you know, the impact you're having on the learner. Um, and that's some work that we're doing this year. Um, but that's, that's kind of what is next, you know? And, and you can see the picture here of our team. You know, there's three of us that get, are fortunate to be up here to represent um, the 13 of us that work in L&D for AGDC. Um, some really incredibly passionate, talented folks that really care about the work that we do. Um, and I'd be remiss not to thank them for all the work they put in for us Couldn't to do uh, without deliver them. the university. That's right. Couldn't that, do without them. That's awesome. And uh, thanks for uh, you know, sharing your story with us. We've really enjoyed, obviously, partnering and working with you on it as well and hopefully continue on that journey. So um, we, the Ultra team are going to be in the Tribridge booth uh, after this for a little bit. So. If anyone out there has any other questions or would like to talk to them further you know, about their experience and just have a discussion, feel free to stop by our booth. And thanks for your time. And we're glad we were able to share this story. We uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg.